What's going on guys? Christian here from CK Wraps. Don't forget to check out my website, ckwraps.com. I'll put a link in the description below. Now, I'm gonna be tinting some tail lights today. I'm gonna be tinting these tail lights in a wet application film. So this wet application film means that we do not have air release channels. It's gonna be installed a lot differently than an air release tint, which is mostly what I use when I use tinting for lights. Um, the possibility of what you can and can't do with air release versus non-air release, I mean, it does vary drastically. Some, some tail lights out there and some headlights out there are very difficult to wrap. So this is where an air release tint, in my opinion, comes into play. Now, when it comes to the finish, they vary quite a bit. Up close, you're gonna see a smoother, more consistent finish with a tint that doesn't have air release. So a wet application tint, similar to what I'm going to install today. Uh, this tint that I'm installing today is from Flexi Shield, and the, the pigment is sort of like a, like a light smoke tint. So you'll, you'll see it um, for the most part. It looks kind of dark on the roll, but you know, it, looks, it looks pretty light smoke. That wouldn't call that dark. All right, so we'll see that in a second. Um, what we're gonna need when we do this is we're gonna need a couple of things. We're gonna need some uh, slip solution, so some soap and water. I uh, highly recommended Johnson & Johnson baby soap. And we're gonna need a tack solution as well. So this is basically diluted isopropyl alcohol, which is in this bottle. And what we have in this bottle is our slip solution. We need a slip solution because we don't have air release channels or air egress. This is gonna allow us to squeeze you out the air. But what's gonna happen is the film is gonna wanna move around and slide. Now, typically, you could do like pre-cut tints and they are a bit easier to install if they are pre-cut, depending on the taillight actually, and if you know what you're doing. Now, I'm bulking this one, which means that I'm taking uh, an excess amount of film and I'm wrapping the taillight with an, ex an excess amount of uh, film because I don't have a template to actually cut this taillight on the Audi. Now, we're gonna have to mask, is what I always do. Do we have to? Probably not necessarily, but we always mask, I always mask. And then I'm gonna use some 70% isopropyl, so isopropyl alcohol to actually wipe off the lens. It's important to use uh, something that's not too strong because we could crack the lens with something that's higher uh, as far as uh, the alcohol percentage goes because it dries out the plastic very abruptly and these things can crack, so we gotta keep that in mind. I don't really like to spray the isopropyl directly on the lens. I wanna make sure that I'm not um, you know, causing a reaction that happens too quickly, so I'm gonna spray it on the cloth first, microfiber cloth, and we're gonna get this thing clean. And then I'm just gonna wipe across. Now, there is some kind of a smear here, so I'm gonna get that. And we're gonna make sure in all our recess channels here that we're cleaning very well because we want the film to stick. We need it, we need it to adhere. These are not the hardest lights in the world to tint, okay? These are actually pretty easy on, on the Audi A4. Uh, this one over here, I'll show you afterwards. This is the easier one of the two for the most part. And we're gonna see how this goes. Cool. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna mask. Any kind of masking tape will do for the most part. Uh, I do typically like to use 3M301 Plus. It's yellow uh, as it conforms really nicely and doesn't leave any adhesive behind. We wanna get this pretty close to the edge. And this is not 3M301 Plus. But this one does stretch pretty well. This is 3M, but is not 301 Plus. The reason why we mask is uh, to make sure that we don't have any tension on the edges. So when we go to, you know, check afterwards with a bit of heat, making sure that we don't have that tension kicking around on the edges. It only takes a second to mask, guys, and it's totally worth doing. Um, I always do it. Perfect. So we're gonna go over one more time because I saw a couple of wet spots, and then we're going to we're gonna tint these lights. So, I didn't want to leave any isopropyl alcohol on the surface. Now, what we're going to do next is make sure this has some pressure in it. And we're going to mist it off. We're 
we're going to take our tent and we're going to place it in an area that makes the most sense. Again, these are pretty flat right all the way across, not too much of a heavy taper. There is this recessed area in here. Uh, the film will stick though. I do like how they use a plastic liner. So as we peel it off, we're going to miss this. This prevents the film from sticking to itself. You want to make sure you, your hands are sort of wet too. If your hands are wet, then you don't really have to worry about fingerprints. But we still want to keep our hands from the ex like on the exterior part of the tint. We don't want to put our hands where, we, where we're going to be tinting because there's a possibility that you could leave a fingerprint. All right, it's the fun part about wet tint, right? So we're gonna make a mess. But we do get a different result in the end. Now again, not always possible to tint all lights with a wet app film. Some are gonna be extremely difficult to do. So all we're gonna do is place it into the general area that we need it to be. Pretty straightforward. We also need a rubber squeegee, and I forgot to mention that in the beginning. A rubber squeegee is going to be a little bit softer so we don't damage the film. Like something like this is actually, this is a rubber squeegee as well. This would work. But I, I prefer this one because it's a bit more stable. It's a bit more rigid because it's a little bit thicker. It doesn't flex as much as this one does. I can, I, I can, I can but there's more resistance involved. All right, so next thing we're going to do is spray off the exterior as well because spraying off the exterior is going to allow the rubber to glide along the surface. And then we're going to squeegee this, the fluid out from underneath the film. Now I don't mind having a bit of bunched up film in this area here because it's going to allow the film to fall into that recess a little bit better. Now it's, it's fighting me a bit, as you can see, the film wants to pull back slightly here because we're coming around the bend. So I'm gonna pull it sort of tight, because you can. And then we wanna just keep squeegeeing until the wrinkles go away. That one's gone, that one's gone. Again, on a more complex light, it's going to be more difficult. We'll get into that later, but I do want to show you what this one is like. So again, I'm just going to pull from the top. And tack solution, I'm going to show you where that comes into play in a moment. Tack solution comes into play when we can't get the film uh, to adhere, basically. So, sort of a spot like this, where it's just not wanting to adhere. We're going to use it around the edges as well. So we want to hold those wrinkles down. Being thorough and consistent with this is very important. Uh, we want to make sure that we're getting all of the water out or all of the slip solution out. So you sort of dry it off. You can see as we squeegee across, we don't have any bubbles. That is a casting point right there, that little dot. So if you happen to notice that, that is just a casting point for the headlight or sorry, for the taillight itself. A lot of taillights have those. So now that I've done this, what I'm going to do is trim out the exterior. This is why I have the, uh, the painter's tape here. And this is going to allow me to get some tack solution down underneath that edge. Oh, that's the spot, there we go. One day I will do a comparison video of the air release tint and the finish uh, in comparison to this non-air release tint and the finish. And then we'll also get into more complicated lights as well because the complicated lights are uh, definitely where an air release tint shines. But we'll see what we can do with this in the end. 
All right. So now that I lifted all that off, what we want to do is take our tack solution and I like to spray it in behind to get this to actually tack. So the alcohol is going to dilute the soapy water basically. Essentially that's what it's doing. I could even use it on the exterior a bit if I want to. If I'm a little bit too lazy to go and get the, uh, the slip. I'm just making sure that we're not leaving any wrinkles or bubbles behind. And then we face the challenge of fighting wrinkles when we're doing this. But if, you, if you're patient enough, they go away. Just kind of got to hold it. Could I do this? Can I do this dry? I actually can do this dry. Um, but it's not how it's supposed to be done. So I'm showing you with it, the tack solution and the slip solution. To do this dry is a, is a whole different uh, process in the end. Again, being able to push nice and consistently to get all those wrinkles out from the edge. Down here, I don't think we have to worry as much. Uh, it's more flat, but I am gonna add a little bit of tack just to keep those edges down. We do have that taper in at the top, right? So the bottom side is just goes, it just runs completely flat. Let's see under here. It's pretty much down. Still have that middle section to do. So we're gonna do that right in here. In order for me to do that, I'm gonna to try to squeeze in some tack solution right through here. All of this is gonna squeeze you out, remember, okay? And so I'm just gonna take my finger and we're gonna take our time and squeeze you through. Holding it really firmly as I squeeze you. And just, again, taking your time is important because you have to allow the film a moment to bond. Let's go through the middle here. And you can see that I'm working the deepest part of the recess first. And then I come back to the middle afterwards. It's going down really nicely. So again, I'm fighting a little bit here, so let's throw a little more tack in there. That is, I use a lot um, just because I'm comfortable with that. It doesn't always make sense. It might not be making sense to a lot of people out there who do this for a living. Um, but I find that I prefer more tack than not. As long as you're being thorough and consistent, we get a nice, we get a nice result in the end. Before I ever cut this, what I wanna do is let it dry a bit. Um, this is gonna prevent the blade from dragging the film and it p potentially moving, okay? So we wanna make sure we let it dry a little bit. Um, you could, at this point, take a heat gun to the edges. Not that, not that important that we worry about it too much because we're gonna basically either roll them around or just cut it right off at the edge. So we're not gonna cause any damage to the film. You don't wanna take this film and heat it and stretch it. It's not the kind of film to do that with because we're gonna leave a lot of glue lines and we don't want that, especially with the, you know, how glossy and how nice this film is. They'll show up, they'll show up a lot. I'm gonna wipe it off a little bit. And it kind of gives you a perspective of the finish right now. So I see that I've got a little bit of air in here. Sorry, air, water, I'm used to the air. Um, what I can do with this bubble in here afterwards is take a syringe and suck that out. So I'll leave that there for now, and then we'll take the syringe and we'll suck that water out, and I'll show you what that looks like. We're gonna move on to this tail light right here. 
because this one's a bit different when it comes to tinting it. We do have this recessed area right here, and a lot of you might be asking, like, oh my god, how do you do that? Well, I'll show you how to do that, because it's not really not that difficult. I'm going to end up cutting off this end right here, right now, so we can get it out of the way. Pierce through the middle, take my blade, and drag it down. Then I'm going to come work my way up to the top. And I keep the back of my blade, which means the flat part of my blade, resting on the edge of the light itself. Let's get that out of the way. Amazing. Afterwards, we can go over the edge, finish it up with some heat, and make it look pretty. Let's move on to this light right here. So again, we're going to prep it, we're going to clean it. Clean off the exterior side of it a little bit. And we're going to get to doing this one right here. So we're going to mask next. Let's do that. Make sure it's dry enough to mask. Not a lot of masking for this one here, just a tiny bit. Not even really that necessary, so it's not much of a bend to the light itself. A little bit down here. I don't even really need it, but I'll do it. And then I'm not even going to bother with this area right here. It's not important. Uh, you might notice that the car is pretty dirty. It's a rainy day today. We didn't wash the car off. We're just tinting the lights. So Brandon was okay with me just kind of wiping things off and going from there. Next, we're going to take our slip solution. Wet it all up. We'll take a piece of film. And line it up. Maybe I can run it this way. Let's see if I have enough side to side. Nice. It works side to side. All right. So this, this film will not matter what direction we actually run it in. It's not going to change as far as uh, how the appearance of the film looks. So don't worry too much. So we can line that up. I'm going to make sure I cut off enough on the bottom. End to end, we're not doing a lot of stretching, so I don't need a lot of extra film. It's just nice to have a little extra on the top and the bottom. Perfect. Same thing goes when we uh, remove the release liner, is we're going to wet it a little bit just so it doesn't stick to itself. Because as it's curling, you notice that it's going to want to stick to itself. A little more. That's probably pretty good. Sweat my hands a little bit. And we're going to get this guy into place. Okay, so we're just going to line it up end to end. Pretty straightforward as far as that goes, right? We're going to wet the exterior. And then we're going to squeegee very consistently all the way through. Now this has a taper again at the top. So we want to push in and push up. This kind of film is very pliable, okay? It's not like it doesn't bend or move or do anything or, or stretch at all. It does, it is very pliable. So you can do quite a bit with it, but it does have limitations in the end. So this light has a similar recessed area like the other one on the other side, but just not quite as drastic. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick the film up. And we're going to lay into the recess. Because we can't. I always like laying into recesses because it creates better longevity. Just in case. I don't question. It's not that I'm so much, I, sorry, I am questioning the adhesive and how long that's going to last um, as far as having resistance on it goes. It, it might not last forever. And if you, the goal was to have it last forever, the goal is always to have it last forever. Um, you do want to try and avoid tension whenever possible. Okay, so for this bottom area right here, I want to do a, I'm basically going to do a cut and it's going to drop, right? We got to keep in mind that we don't want to cut into the light. 
So I'm going to cut on the very bottom side of this right here. And I don't want to cut into the light itself, right? So as we get closer to the edge or to the end of it, we'll take our time. And then now that's going to come down. See? I have to cut out here still. So it's one separate tab. Now, obviously underneath the film or underneath the light, it's not going to be tinted, but that's not that big of a deal under here. We're, I don't even know if there is a light under here. No, it's just black plastic. So we don't even need to tint that area. So I wouldn't worry about that. Again, similar thing, squeegee the water out. Beautiful. That would be how you tint these lights. So I'm gonna get into cutting in a second. I need a little slip solution here. You can see some wrinkles. So let's put a little bit of, sorry, tack solution. And that should help hold that down a bit. Sometimes it's a little bit of a wrestling match. It's not like, it's not a big wrestling match. It's a little bit of a wrestling match. You have to just sit there and be patient with it. What's nice about this is we're gonna show you what the other side looks like afterwards versus taillights on this side. Okay, what we're ready for is ready to cut. So I know that I said I, you should let it dry a little bit. That's just to ensure that you can get a nice cut. I'm pretty confident I can get a nice cut even without letting it dry. But depending on your skill level in cutting, you might not have the same success. So that's why I said just come back to it, go to the other side and let it dry. And get that out of the way. Perfect, so that side's done. Afterwards, once we're done, you can notice the edges are probably not very consistent right now. We're gonna take it once it dries for sure, and then we're gonna heat it and we're gonna press them around slightly. We're gonna find a space in here. That makes sense. And we're gonna cut, and we're gonna drag our blade across the top edge of the light. If you leave less film with this, it's actually better. You get a nicer, cleaner cut. And again, we don't have a lot of tension on these edges. So the fact that the film should pull, will pull off is very, very, very unlikely. There we go. Let's do the very bottom edge here. I always start in and work my way out. I'm trying to cut against the way I normally cut, just to stay out of the camera. See, when it's a little bit too wet, it's hard to do sometimes uh, because the film is still sliding slightly. So if I keep enough tension on it, we're good. That's why I said to let it dry because you might not be used to adding tension to the film and cutting at the same time. This is where it gets a little tricky up here. It's a little tight spot. There we go. Let's do the big one now, the large light on the left. Just trying to find that sweet spot. There we go. Now, let's just say we missed a teeny tiny bit of the light. It's usually not that big of a deal because you cannot tell that you've missed a tiny bit. This is why wrapping around the edge isn't so necessary. Um, what wrapping around the edge can do is it can cause failure because we have too much film kicking around the edge of the light that doesn't need it. There's nowhere for it to grab onto, essentially. So again, I'm applying tension to the film and cutting at the same time, pulling with my left hand, cutting with my right. I'm just trying to keep that blade on 
the light side. And let's finish off this last inch here. Perfect. So to actually wrap these taillights, not too bad. I just showed you guys how to do them. I'm gonna get in around the edges and heat them up afterwards once it dries a little bit, probably be about you know, 15, 20 minutes or so from now. I'm gonna tint the other side. And as you can see from one side to the next, you know, adds a really nice effect. Is this legal where you are? Okay, check to see where you are and to see if things like this are legal or not legal. If you wanna do this, I mean, highly recommended for off-road uh, off use only, but again, that depends on where you are. Some places might be like, okay with it. Um, you know, the tint is nice and dark. It does give the car, the vehicle itself, a really nice effect. I've done a chrome trim delete on this as well. So it does give the car a really nice effect. But again, you know, you might be subject to getting a ticket for something like this. So keep in mind that there is always risk involved in modifying your vehicle in certain ways. You know, wrapping the car in a full color change, not really much risk, but when you start tampering around with lights and things like that, even when you change light bulbs out of your headlights and your taillights, you're not even supposed to be doing that. So keep that in mind, guys. Anytime you modify a vehicle in any way, you know, there is risk involved as far as, you know, what is legal and what is not legal. You know, in, in Toronto, we can't go throw, or in Ontario, we can't just go throw turbos all over our cars and, you know, insurance and the ministry and everything else be happy with it. But, you know, you go to Florida and that's totally cool. You can put a weed whacker engine in a Ferrari, it doesn't matter. But, you know, everywhere you are, it will vary depending on laws and restrictions and regulations. Again, showing you the, the way to install a wet application tint, the visual effect that you're gonna get, and that's pretty much it. You know, there is a slight bit more clarity to the film. It does look great. Did work wonderfully well. Uh, you know, it should last. You know, we'll kind of see how this goes over time as far as the recess goes, but I have a feeling it's gonna stick very well. It's gonna adhere very well, and I don't think we're gonna have any issue at all with it, uh, especially since I laid into this one over here. We'll be totally fine with that one. Again, I thank you guys very much for watching. I hope the video was informative and helpful. Take care.